So I want to talk about something that is quite profound. It is the reason your mind wanders. It is the reason your attention, memory, and problem-solving abilities feel perturbed. It is one of the many reasons people suffer from depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It is. It can definitely lead to that and other neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's. It is the reason you ruminate, which simply means to think deeply about something. The dark side of that is we tend to ruminate about darkness, the negative things, the bad things. And all this is what is called our default mode network or default mode thinking or just default thinking. So I want to talk about this because knowing this and understanding this is going to free you. How many of you know of someone who says that they can't be alone with their own thoughts? How many of you say you can't be alone with your thoughts? That's what this is. Is there a way out? Absolutely. Just understand what you are dealing with. Because this default mode network is really what people are familiar with already. The inner demon. The default mode network is a network of brain regions that are active when an individual is not focused on the outside world and the brain is at rest. The DMN is associated with a range of mental activities, mind wandering, daydreaming, self-referential thoughts, introspection. It is the state of thinking we go into when we are not busy with other tasks or when we are doing things that don't really require a lot of mental focus. You could be doing something as simple as laundry and you'll go into default mode. See what happens is you could be out having the time of your life, not a care in the world sometimes because at that moment you are very busy. Once things quiet down, once you're alone, once you're alone with your thoughts, your brain thinks, hey, remember what that person did to you? Remember that? Remember how they treated you? Huh? Once you realize what's happening, you try to escape it. You can turn on the TV, play video games, you can turn on some music, and none of it works. The thought does not escape you until something pulls you out of that thought. But here's the kicker. Once whatever pulled you out, maybe you got a phone call from a friend and you talk for 30 minutes. As soon as that call is over, the voice comes back. The voice wants you to take action. You feel like you have to do something. The term default mode comes from the idea that this network appears to be the default state of the brain when it is not engaged in a specific task. It's actually what a lot of people refer to as processing. They are processing the passing of a loved one. They are processing the trauma or what have you. The rumination and overthinking is what contributes to the persistence of negative thoughts and emotions, potentially leading to conditions like anxiety and depression. 
you know, one of the things we should understand when it comes to human emotion is that we really only have two emotions. Either we feel good or we feel bad. That's it. It is a sliding scale, but those are the two emotions. And those two emotions, feeling good and feeling bad, are usually determined by how much pain we experience and how much pain we can avoid. Notice that when you are not in any pain whatsoever, mental or physical, you're fine. You are on top of the world and you really don't have to do too much. But soon as a little discomfort enters the picture, once those thoughts of past pain comes into your mind, that good feeling is all over. So, in a healthy individual, this is not supposed to happen. You are not supposed to default into causing yourself pain. And the reason this happens is because people have developed a habit. It is a habit, and so what you have to do is simply change the habit. The brain is very plastic. Remember, it's flexible enough to fix. So what you have to do is train your brain to think about something else when you go into default mode. Don't try to distract yourself to get around this. Make sure you do not pick up your phone or any electronic device for this. There are two things, really. One is meditation and the other is your diet. If you don't think food affects the way you think and feel, then think again. Meditation is basically training your brain to shift your thoughts from one thing to another. And over time, when you do this regularly, when you do go into default mode, your brain will automatically think about things that don't cause pain. When I do catch myself ruminating or going into some negative default state, I tell myself, cancel, cancel, cancel that thought. And then I have to immediately shift my focus. And here is a tiny trick. Immediately move your head around and start looking at things around you in that moment. Look closely at the objects and scenery. Because a lot of the times when you are sitting there thinking about something negative, you're staring. You're just sitting there staring sometimes. Move your head around and start looking at everything around you. It does help to snap you out of it. Immediately change the scene. Go outside and look at things far away. Remember, if you keep thinking about negative things in your default mode, it is a habit and so that habit comes with triggers. For example, if this thought comes to you as you are brushing your teeth, you can develop a pattern to where every time you brush your teeth it triggers these thoughts. Or whenever in the morning you sit to have a cup of coffee in peace and silence, the thoughts come and they can attach themselves to triggers. Just like smokers have triggers. Maybe they have to smoke after a meal or smoke with coffee, what have you. You see, so you could meditate on a specific body part and give that your mental attention. But if you find yourself doing this, going into this negative default mode of thinking and you can't be alone with your thoughts, it may be an indicator that you need to change your diet as well. You may need to eat something. Some people don't eat enough. Some people don't get enough sleep so that the brain can process and eliminate the negative thoughts. You could be over something, but the thoughts are still hanging around because your brain hasn't had a chance to clean it up while you sleep so that it can unplug the negative pathways and grow the positive pathways in very simple terms. You know how people say, I'll forgive, but I won't forget? Well, my friends, that's a problem. Actually, forgiveness is all about forgetting. 
It's in the word itself. God is the only one who actually exercises true forgiveness because he can actually forget our sins. But we can't forget each other's sins, can we? So what do we truly forgive? Remember, you learned the lesson when it happened. There is no sense in repeating the lesson in your head over and over again. Just some things to think about the next time you have those intrusive thoughts that drive you to take unnecessary actions. Hell, just tell yourself to shut up. Look around you, because nothing is happening to you at the moment. Think about your meditations. Think about what you are eating or what you ate, and see if there is any correlation to a particular food item and how you feel about a half hour or hour after eating or drinking. The point is, don't just allow yourself to go into negative default mode. Don't accept it. Do what you need to do to stop it because you know it's your thoughts. Most people don't know what's really happening to them and what to do about it. This is what's happening. And if you're starting to realize it now, then you can do something about it. There is a lot of content and information about the default mode network. So you can get different opinions and testimonies to help you along the journey. Because it is a journey that you know will improve your life. So enjoy the journey.